well well welcome back again to another video and yes it's been quite some time since i did my last video but you know life and everything and i've been <laughs> i've been really busy uh, you know with work and life and stuff so yeah anyway recently amd launched a new ryzen 3000 processors and yeah you know what i'm actually rocking one of those right now and yes, they're super good and super interesting, but they may have just overshadowed another interesting release, which is the new Radeon Navi graphics card. Now, I've been watching a lot of other videos and, you know, checking out Twitter from people like Hardware Unboxed and to me, Joe PC Tech, where they messed around with, you know, fitting these custom coolers from older Radeon graphics cards onto their 5700s, and they found that it works perfectly fine with these new Navi GPUs and also cools them so much better than the stock blower. Not much of a surprise there, but you know. So now I thought of this and since there are no AIB partner cards right now, let alone liquid cooled ones, I thought to myself, why not install a Frostflow 120 VGA into one of these bad boys and see just how much better they perform. This would also make it probably the first ever AIO liquid cooled Radeon 5700 and I am just super keen to find out how it performs and how well it can cool this GPU as well as maybe the noise levels and if of course you can get some extra performance out of it. So of course that's enough talk for now, let's find out exactly how much the Frostflow 120 VGA can help the Radeon 5700s. Before we move on though, there's something that I want to mention and I think that it might help some of you. After installing this card, I was getting really low FPS, constant crashes and issues with getting any monitoring data at all from the GPU as everything was just 0%. So after countless hours, a clean format and a sleepless night trying to figure out what was going on, it turns out that this issue is because the Strix B450F that I was using has some kind of PCIe Gen 4 support in its latest BIOS from ASUS and well yeah, it's, it's kind of not supposed to have it and it's a little buggy and so the solution was to head into the BIOS and set the PCIe link speed from Auto to Gen 3. This solved all of my problems and I was able to monitor the GPU as well as get full FPS in my games. Anyway, back to the content. Of course, it wouldn't be much of a comparison if I first did not take some initial readings. What I did first was to measure how loud and hot the Radeon 5700 got using its stock blower fan under idle and load conditions. So as you can see from the results, the idle temperatures were not great but not terrible. It's still pretty high and well, yeah, the temperatures I've, I've seen better. As far as the fans go, I noticed something really interesting under the default profile. The fans would only max out at 42% and I was wondering why this was. So I went in and manually threw it up to 100% and you can hear it for yourself why they did not do this. Let's just say that in my infinite wisdom, I ran this test at 5 in the morning and it was so incredibly loud that it woke up my wife and I got into a lot of trouble. Thanks AMD. I also did some gaming benchmarks for comparison using Rainbow Six Siege and Unigine Superposition so that I can compare them for later. With that out of the way, I went ahead and stripped the card apart and installed the ID Cooling Frostflow 120 VGA onto it. As far as installation goes, for the most part, it was super simple, but I did have some hiccups along the way. This is because the RAM chips on these new Navi GPUs were just a bit close to the die itself compared to my 1080 Ti, and because of that, it has a little bit of clearance issues when I try to install the AIO pump onto it. The fix, of course, was just to offset them by about 1 to 2 millimeters, and that worked perfectly fine. Apart from that, there is some row of ICs that I couldn't really cool at all because the uh, because of the size of the heat sinks that I have, with them being too big to fit and you know clearance issues. So if someone is looking to do this mod, I would highly recommend that you get some smaller aftermarket heat sinks and just slap them onto there. It's a little bit of an annoyance, but it's a pretty easy fix, you know, for all intents and purposes. 
those two were pretty much the biggest issues that I faced getting this cooler installed onto this GPU. And then all I had to do was to just make sure that the mounting brackets are configured correctly to fit AMD GPUs. And of course, to install the cooler and to get everything hooked in. I slapped the GPU back into my system for testing and here are the results of the mod. Temperature saw a huge drop from idle from 13 Celsius to 6 Celsius delta over ambient and under low the temperatures went from 49 Celsius and 62 Celsius for temperatures and junction temperatures respectively to a value of 30 Celsius and 39 Celsius. The biggest change probably comes in the form of the noise levels as the noise from the cooler itself was near inaudible of course and uh, the fan on my radiator was near silent as well. Bear in mind that both fans ran at a constant speed and of course, of course, you can get better acoustic performance if you maybe used something like a Noctua cooler or equivalent on the radiator. The testing doesn't end there though. With this new cooler installed, I headed into Radeon Wattman and turned on the manual tuning control. From there, I bumped the maximum frequency that the GPU could hit up to 1850 and the memory up to 930. Bumping up these clocks saw an increased idle temperature of 7 Celsius for both temperature and junction temperature and under load, an increase of 4 Celsius to 34 Celsius for temperature, and an increase of 9 Celsius to 48 Celsius for the junction temperature. Still values that are very good, you know, for all intents and purposes and running Rainbow Six Siege and Unigine Superposition benchmarks once again, there was an increase in FPS of about 3 to 4 frames in Rainbow Six Siege and an increase in the 1080p Extreme score from 4380 to 4620. Now I'm pretty sure that someone who knows how to overclock these cards better could get a higher score, you know, using the Radeon power play tables, I, I think that that was called. Yet, yeah, you know, but as for now, these were the scores that I got. This mod was honestly super fun to pull off and I couldn't have really done it if a friend of mine didn't loan me his brand new 5700 for a few days and even let me tear it apart and run tests on it. So you know what, kudos to you buddy. As far as improvements go, I think that this mod is, you know, interesting and definitely worthwhile. It's not exactly a straight plug and play solution as I would highly recommend getting those smaller heatsinks for, you know, those IC components. But other than that, getting it installed was super easy and in my opinion, the temperature and noise benefits alone make this mod worth considering. Plus, of course, it doesn't cost as much as running a full-blown water cooling setup as the Frostflow 120 VGA comes in at just 33 USD on Taobao. Anyway, uh, so with that said, tell me what you guys think about the mod. Is it worthwhile? Is it stupid? Or is it incredibly cool? Uh, no pun intended. Or maybe. <laughs> anyway, leave your comments down below, drop a like if you liked the video, stay subscribed and notified with the bell icon and the subscribe button and share it if, of course, you liked this awesome mod. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent, and I will catch you guys in the next video.